Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Today's episode is brought to you by DB. DB is a Scandinavian brand that makes backpacks and bags to help people on the move stay ready for anything. From the streets to the peaks, DB's gear is travel tested by some of the world's best athletes, adventurers, and creators. Over the past decade, DB has designed and developed, released, and refined the best bags in the market. With DB's patent hookup system, you are able to attach smaller products to your backpack, roller, or tote. I know for me, when I travel, I want to have everything kind of hooked up together so that when I'm going and on the go, everything is together and I feel safe and secure. We are teaming up with DB to exclusively offer our listeners 10% off your next purchase by using the code POD10. Or going to the link in our show notes, DB, it's time to move on, time to get going. Happy Friday. We almost there. We are almost there. And what do I mean by that? Back to school. There are some children, of course, there are some adults, everybody that's already back to school. I send nothing but abundance of blessings to you, but we are almost there. And I'm telling you right now, I am just like scratching at my head. I don't know what's going to happen, kind of trying to carve it out, you know, with our children and going back to school. But today we have a, an amazing treat. We have Gladys uh, Simeon and she is here. She is a life coach for moms who are trying to balance their work and family along with life. I needed to have Gladys a couple of years ago when I became a mom. If you're not a mom and you're just like, oh, this is not for me, please still listen. Listen in because when we're talking about things that are still not, you feel may or not be a part of your story, there are always going to be gems that are dropped that are still going to speak to you. I have not always been a parent. And at one point, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to be a mom um, because being a mom is a touchy subject. There are women who suffer in silence because they're attempting or want to be a mom and that's just not happening for them. There are women who naturally just don't want to be a mom and there's nothing wrong with wherever you are you may not have decided you're not sure you're unsure um I wasn't always sure that I always wanted to be a mom however now that I have become a mom I know that it's very important it's very important to me as a mother to make sure that I am mirroring quality behavior with my children and to make sure that I am doing the things that I need to do to be a better mom not because I'm trying to win an award but because I want to make sure that I believe that being a mom is a ministry within itself and when I say a ministry that PK part of me as you can hear is never going to go anywhere but to me that that means of making sure that because I'm becoming a mom or I am a mom, the things that I do, the things that I mirror in front of them is the things that I'm supposed to be mirroring. Kids do what you what they see you do, not necessarily always what you say. And so when I tell them I need their rooms clean in the morning, I can't come in my room and not have it clean. Now, again, things happen and you're not always 100%, but for the most part, when they wake up and I'm waking up, I try to mirror that good behavior. If I'm talking to them about eating right, I have to mirror that. And any of us, whether you're a parent or not, there are things that we put into the atmosphere that we want people to do, but we're not willing to do ourselves. I come from a perspective that I'm willing to teach somebody something or tell somebody something from a place that I've experienced and, and, and that I'm doing the same things that I'm teaching. I don't try to tell somebody something that I don't do. And that's why I feel like everything comes out a little bit more genuine when you do that. But Gladys is here. She's going to talk about her coaching for moms. I'm going to share some stories about some of the, the hardships of being a mom. I don't want to come as a place of complaining. That's not what this episode is about. But there are certain things that are unique to becoming a mom, especially when you're a mom in the workforce. Being the mom in a workforce is not always what it's cracked up to be. I've had people come in me at jobs and say, well, you know, you're at the age of being a you know, childbearing age. 
Um, I don't even know what that means in this in this day and time because there's women that are over 40, 50 years old that are having children. But when you're about 20, 25, I want to say more 25 and up between 25 and 35, it's when you go for a job, there are times where I've had people say, well, are you, are you basically, are you engaged? Are you married? Are you about to have a family? What's your, your likelihood of you staying at this position for more than two years? I don't think... And now it's a little bit better, but back when I, before I even had children, I would get questioned that. One, is illegal to do so. You should not be asking a woman of any age about what they're doing about their future and having children. But we all know that there is this unspoken conversation that happens with women about people policing other people's uteruses. I have been very adamant, even as a person who do does have children, to never question a woman and ask her about whether or not she's going to have a child, whether or not she's going to have more children, because you never know someone's story. You would think that because I'm a mom that I'm like, go ahead and ask that but that is something I believe is a very personal situation we don't know what people's stories are so we have got to get to become a society that kind of keeps our conversations and our mouths off of other people when it comes to what people should be doing when fertility is being brought up because that is a very um that's a very that's a very touchy subject. So if you're listening and you don't have children, I adjure you to listen either way because there's some things that are going to be said and some things that we can apply no matter what in your life or your your walk of life is right now. I always believe that if you're just listening and you're open, there's so many things that can drop that can be brought into your spirit that kind of awakens the part of you that needs to be awakened by just a conversation. So go ahead and listen either way but Gladys is here she is a coach to mom so if you are a parent and a mom and you're really feeling burnt out you don't feel like you have the support that you need you're struggling with this whole you know work-life balance some of us are still at home you know teaching our children some of us are working from home and it's not always easy you may come in my house and if I'm in the middle of a meeting and I have to tell people quick my kids are here I can't always make them be as quiet as someone would think. We need to get to the understanding that as people are electing to continue to work from home for safety reasons, let's be real. Being able to work from home is not as easy as people make it sound, but it's also for safety reasons. The Delta variant is not going anywhere. If anything, it's multiplying as far as how many more people are getting sick. If you watch the numbers or believe in them, that's your choice to do so or not. But as long as they're saying that our safety is in jeopardy, and this is coming from a woman who's had, you know, grandparents and aunts that were sick one grandparent that was on the ventilator. This is not to be played with. I take this very seriously. Again, this is your choice. You can do whatever you choose. But Gladys is here to talk about the pitfalls of being a mom in general and the the lack of support that you may be feeling, especially when you're a working mom, the lack of support that you feel when you're becoming a mom, because then you lose yourself in becoming a mom. Everything becomes about that child. I was always taught that when you have a child, your life is no longer your own. And that's very true. We were never taught balance. We were never taught that we can give some things to our husband because we're taught in our society, to be honest with you, that it's the women's quote unquote job to, you know, let Beyonce say, have these kids and get back to business. But somebody has to be willing to find a way to do both, to be able to create the the life that you choose and be able to take care of your mental health, your emotional health. These are the very things that are super important. In our show notes, you're going to find all the information to get in contact with Gladys if you want to sit on her couch. I know you're like her coach. No, no, she is a coach, but you want to know how to sit on her couch. That is how she approaches it. You know, when you're on a couch, it's one of the most comfortable places. And that's how she approaches her clients when she's talking to them, especially for moms who don't always have the, all the time in the world to dedicate to themselves being encouraged to take out some time to carve out some time. I promise you that if you carve out time for yourself on a regular basis, every time you come back from those times, you will come back rejuvenated, you will come back like a well oiled machine, you will be able to come back and do the things that are necessary. I know that when I take little breaks for myself, and I take care of my self care, and I'm taking care of my mental health, I can flow and listen to my children more. I can lean into the things that they need and I can actually be a better supporter of what they are needing in this life. Because remember, 
They are a gift to us. They belong to this world. They belong to themselves. They belong to figure out where they need and what they need may not always be what we want them to be. So without any further ado, let's get into this episode. Gladys, thank you so much for being here. Let's take it away. Happy Friday to all of my Conversation with Toy listening family. I am so excited. We have Gladys, is, and I'm just glad for her to be here. She is like the mom coach. I'm going to call her the mom coach. And what, I like it. And, and, and what I know a lot of people who are hearing this, maybe you're not a mom, maybe you're thinking about becoming a mom, but I'm going to share a part of my story before we even get into this conversation. So as everyone should know by now, I have three children, um, their ages are 12, nine, and seven. And the difficulty that I experienced with going back to work or even getting back into the working field was, you know, when you become a mom, you're, you're considered no longer valuable in corporate America. The second you have a child, you're no longer considered to be able to work and, and handle the responsibilities. I had to always explain my um, my lack of, what, why do you have a gap on your resume? Oh, I had children. And then when you say that, then that becomes, you know, a, 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 a eyesore to, inter, you know, to people who are trying, to, you're trying to interview for, or you're going back into your job. Um, I was sharing with Gladys before we um, started recording about how I had my third child and my boss was so eager for me to get back to work. He allowed me to bring her into my job for six months. Now, a lot of people would be like, oh, that sounds so great. But when you're trying to nurse a child and you're trying to handle a job, you're not giving the, your, your child the individual attention that they need. And you're not giving yourself the time that you need to heal emotionally, mentally and physically from the demands of having a, um, a child. I've had all three of my children be a C-section. And in America, we are giving eight weeks to have this baby get cut open, as, which is a major surgery. I had complications after the surgery and I was still required to show back up at work eight weeks later after having a baby. So when people say things like, oh, you're just a mom, let me tell you something about being a mom. Every mom knows we are like the dynamic duels of all households. We have so much power and just our bodies and how we're able to face that a lot of pain that we go through bringing a child into this world. But we need time to heal. We need time to get our lives back in track. And that's where Gladys comes in. We need someone that's going to coach us back into our lives, help us navigate corporate America, because we already know it's not designed for motherhood. So Gladys, let us just have that conversation about what it is that you do and how you're helping specifically our mom audience that are listening. So first of all, Toy, thank you so much. I'm hearing that story over and over again, and I can't help but remark upon how strong and resilient you are. Um, you know, I'm a mom myself, and, it, you know, I thought I had it hard, but I'm sure there are people that have it harder. Right. Um, but thank you for sharing that story. So like you, I had a child in corporate America, and there's definitely something that you feel a sense. I think there's no word because nobody talk really about it, but it's an open secret. You are seen as less desirable, less capable, less available, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, because your priority changes. Um, unfortunately, people see work as a place you go instead of an activity you do. So, um, and I, I hear story, although it's not as prevalent, I hear story of people having to feel like the walk of shame because they have to leave early, because they have to go attend to something for the kid. I don't know. I'm just saying it's time we normalize those conversations. And that's exactly why I became a coach. Because when I, I became a mom, I felt isolated. I felt like, you know, there was a different part of me that was unlocked and I couldn't understand. I couldn't like it was really a lot of confusion. And through this, I realized that they are strength and superpower, like I call them, um, that that came because I had no choice but being strong and resilient. So um, start to talk to other mom. I realized that there were a lot of people that were feeling like you and I thought it was just bad. So I, I created during the pandemic, uh, my dream business, uh, my life couch, and, and I don't call it coach, although I have a coach, but couch because I wanted it to be 
that safe space, right? right. Um, if you think about uh, every household, they have a couch on it, right? It right. could be standing out, it could be blending into the deck decker, but it's always the witness of all or moments that involve emotion. Right. So if we're happy, if we're sad, if we want comfort, we'll go to the couch. So I wanted to create that safe space on a couch that is the right size and the right fabric to all the mothers, working mom, um, to come and unpack, you know, at least to know that they're not alone. Sometimes just talking to each other help. Sometimes you need someone that have walked into your shoes and say, I know what you feel. You know, I see you, I hear you. And that's what I, I, I came in um, to, to tell all the working mothers that, you know, we may not have the magic wand to make things disappear, but stronger together, we can move that needle a little bit every time and normalize the conversation about being a mother and still wanted to have dreams and still wanted to have a career and being ambitious and all those things that are typically associated to someone that doesn't have kids, that is young, et cetera. So. Right. And I am glad that you uh, had that, you know, ability to do that because I know, just like you said, how you felt all, all moms feel the second that you tried to either put yourself back into a working situation or you maybe you were off and you've I've known moms who had kids there, you know, and never was in a working field and now they want to go back in. Yes. It's that that and it shouldn't even be shameful. Having a child right. and having the ability to have a child is a blessing. And then having that happen and turned around to the point where it's is looked at as a negative. And that's like the worst thing. Like I have a degree. I have all these things that I've done. I've worked hard every single day. The second I have a child, now I'm invaluable. I'm no longer <laughs> a team player because I got to go take my child to get shots. Um, I can't be looked at as a team player because I want to go. I got to come in later because I may have to get my child situated or whatever the case may be. But all moms know what that feels like to have that happen. Um, some moms are even losing, you know, they can't make partners in their in their positions because of that. Or they get back to work and they've been downgraded for, you know, a job. It's just, you know, it's like everybody's like, oh, go have children and, and go be fruitful and multiply. And the second you do, you're divided. It's a division yeah. that happens extremely quick. So what is some of the... the the, the objections that you're hearing from other moms when you're talking with them and they're telling you about how they're experiencing, like what are some of the objections that you found? So I was going to say that, um, you know, first of all, there is a movement called Motherhood on Resume um, that I'm very interested in following and I encourage people wow. to Google it. It is really encouraging mothers to go in and talk about being mothers right? Not hiding it, not saying anything. So when I'm asked to introduce myself in like I did with your toy, I say, I'm a mom. That's the first thing I say, right? Um, so normalize those conversations. So typically I, I heard, I hear some horror stories sometimes about, you know, someone that went and never had children and went for an interview and she was told, yeah, you're young. So you are child bearing age so I may take you know I, I don't want to hire you because I'm you may take so long out of business and it's detrimental like those stories I, I I think we're giving them even much space that they deserve by talking about it what right. I propose every time I said flip the script yes your mom yes you had a gap on your resume here's uh, the skill that I have as a result of being a mom, you know, I can juggle multiple priority at once, not multitasking, juggle right. multiple priority means, you know, that you have a list of things to do and you can bring your attention and focus at one thing at a time and not dropping any one bar. <laughs> you have negotiation and you and I were talking about it. When you have young toddlers, like toddlers at home and you can negotiate them out of a tantrum, I don't think anybody and in a corporate world can resist that, like negotiation and, and, you know, tough conversation, making sure that you are always that voice of reason. There are those skills that not only we gain by as a result of having kids, but we practice every single day. You sharpen, your skills are always sharp. You wake me up and I, because my kids are fighting, I know how to defuse this straight away. Right. And at work, 
when you work with a colleague that's always like edgy or you walk in a bad situation, hey, your mom mode comes in. So there's a lot of things that you bring as a result of being a mom. And sometimes we talk about diversity as you know, gender and race, but diversity should include much more than that. I, I feel like I, I gain a little bit more by becoming a mom and it's translated into different areas of my, of my life. That should be recognized. So lead with those skills, lead with those conversations and every single thing that you're doing, managing your house, you say that toy, we're at the heart of the home. Hey, you manage, you work well in a team because you have a team Sometimes you know, the most fortunate about us has a support system, the grandparent, the teacher, you know, and you are making sure everybody has a fair share of the kid. Everybody like it's like a musical. Everybody knows their partition. They play the music and it creates some beautiful arrangement. So there's a lot that as a mom you bring. So if you are a mom and you're listening to us, Think of all those little things that you you do in your day-to-day life that makes everybody's life easier. This is what you should lead with when you go to any conversation where they try to down talk to you because you're a mom. You say, because I'm a mom, here's my magic powers. <laughs> here's exactly. what I do. Right. And that's and- true. That I had to do the same thing when I had to explain a gap. I walked in there scared because you know the second you say it you know I but I always use it as a strength I never allowed it to be something that it was like you know you're a horrible person but I always knew that in the back of my mind especially in the society where you know I had to be prepared for that where I also and I actually glad you mentioned about women who are of childbearing age who may not have children because I've had a job tell me the same thing like oh we oh my god we don't want to hire you because we know that eventually you're going to get married and have kids and I wasn't I didn't even have a, a boyfriend at the time I was you know young and 20 and trying to you know do whatever yeah. and you know you'll get told that but that's crazy that women get that men don't men don't have that issue and yeah they, they, they don't, don't ask, have that issue they don't ask work-life balance questions to men they I don't say well do you have that. a wife do you have a wife and kids they don't do that but you know what it's it's so um you know so funny quote unquote um i specialize i'm a mom coach and by the way i'm gonna steal that from you toy i love yes, being the mom it. coach uh but i do have uh the occasional father uh, on my couch as well and it was striking to me to see that, you know, parents would bring the same skills and superpower to dad. They have the imposter syndrome. They have dad's guilt. All those things that we have, they also do have. For those fathers that are invested and stay at home, and the stigma is also with them. When um, the, one of my clients um, was a stay-at-home dad for two years and to go back to the corporate world was another struggle. So I, 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 we sometimes don't consider <laughs> that it affects parents. But yes, I'm just saying that traditionally women are the, 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 the people that take the most of the childbearing and child rearing. Um, but I was going to say, because it affects everybody that has uh, parenting a child, it's time to normalize those conversations. There's no we point. Also- and we also need to start too with um, women too, because sometimes we can be our worst enemy as we need to find a way to stick together because I had, I don't, it was one of my husband's jobs and a woman, one of his women supervisors was like, well, can't your wife do A, B, and C? Like, you know, my husband is very, he's extremely like hands on, like he's always wanting to be at things and do things. And they were like, well, why can't your, why can't your wife do it? And I was taken back by that when he explained it to me. Cause I was like, what, what do they mean? What, why can't your wife do it? And I found that to be disheartening. Cause I'm like, as much as women know how hard it is to deal with the things that we deal with, it was very, very taken back that a, a woman said that, that why, well, but I was why, gonna why also can't, say that, you know, why can't yeah. your wife do that? I, I was going to say that, yes, it's, it's heartbreaking, um, but also it's conditioning. Sometimes, you know, the way society brought us up, the woman will cook, the man will not. If you come to a house and, you know, when that client of mine came and they say, I'm a stay at home dad, I, I raised my eyebrow like, really? Like, <laughs> like, what's this? Right. But, you know, I get it. It could be 
disheartening, heartbreaking, but sometimes I take it as an opportunity to educate and say, you may have been used to those standards specifically, but society is evolving and growing. And this is why you should also evolve the way you are thinking. So, you know, sometimes people will say things without meaning anything, but if you make them think a little bit about it, they realize that, yeah. What's, <laughs> Um, how is, what's the process if they want to be on your couch? How does, well, your couch, um, how does that, um, how does that happen? Like what, you know, do you go through an interview process? Like how do you handle new clients when they come in? Oh my God. I love interview process. No, uh, I do uh, typically. So they go to my, uh, website. Um, I take them to a six week program. But I, I do what I call a curiosity call, um, which is a 20 minute call where we talk. I just want to hear the chemistry between us, figure out what is it that you have, if it's something I can help, because I'm also very honest. If I cannot help, I want help, right? Um, but that we have those conversations where we mutually assess if we can work together. I talk about my program, you talk about yourself. And, and then when we are matched, we start something. And, and, and it's very important um, because as a coach, you have to establish that trust relationship. So I don't take it lightly when someone trusts me to guide them through their journey. They usually come to my couch when they are depleted. And my role is to let them leave my couch fully charged. Um, so it is a process. And that's why I want to make sure that I have the right people on my couch that I can help. Otherwise, I can refer or advise you to go to different other places. But yeah, it's a very simple process. Hey, it's already complicated to be a mom in a corporate right, world. I don't want to make harder. it more complicated to, um, you know, go and find. So the couch is open. Um, you know, consider me as that friend that you come to to say, oh, I want to unburden myself. I just want to talk about this. I want to move from one place, place A to place B. And I need a little boost. So my couch gives you that little boost. That's good. I'm glad that it's actually simple. Because like you said, we got enough on our plate. We do not need enough. And then this. when you're a mom, you have to grab every little minute to do something, right? So I don't yes. want to make it like a super complicated process. Yeah. And so you're saying that it's six weeks? Like a six, six weeks. Week okay. So I, I call it an awareness journey. So okay. it's called on the couch. Um, and we examine different aspects of your life. The aim is to create a map of you where you will know your strength, your purpose, your opportunity, your tribe, people that will, you know, that will hold you accountable. You know, the people that will draw you back. We examine very little, various aspects of your life. So you understand how you work. So they come to me and say, this is my goal, my two goals, personal, professional, or both professional goals. So someone might say, I want to have a, a new role. I want to be promoted. And then we start looking at what the situation is. What do you bring to the table? What holds you back? What people think of or say of you? And, and then, you know, who are the people that help you? Who are the people that you know you should not be there because they are dragging you down? What's your okay. vision? What would you compromise? What won't you compromise? But at the end of those six weeks, we give you a journey. So when you look at it, you look at that map and you say, those are my area. Those are the people I should avoid because we always, instead of motivating me, they're dragging me down. But those are the people I can seek because they, they always push me up. So it's, it's an introspection journey. And um, the opportunity as a mom to talk about you rather than talk about your spouse, your kid, yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's time dedicated to you. And I had someone um, that came at my couch and say, oh, I have one hour with you. And for me, it's one hour where I can have for myself. So sometimes she come on my couch to talk about something that make her happy when she was young. Okay. <laughs> so all those, you know, it's just that one hour where we're together. And what are the things that, and I, I'm glad that you had that um, opportunity to do that because God knows we need, <laughs> moms need all the support. <laughs> we need all the support and love we can get. What are the things that you do personally that is helpful for you um, that you deal with to help your self-care? Like how do you self-care and get through yourself with your family and um, your coaching and all those things that you're doing? What do you, how do you make it through your days and weeks? How do you handle that? 
Oh, by the grace of God. It's just <laughs> I wish I could participate. <laughs> that, guys. I will be right. rich. I will be definitely rich. But uh joke about um there is uh, you know, I became very intentional about prior prioritizing time for myself. So before I am a mom, a sister, an employee, a worker, a friend, I am me. And I encourage everybody that is there, whether you're a mom or not, to have that time where you recharge your battery. So I see us mom as those very powerful and expensive smartphone, right? You run multiple applications in the background. Every time you ask someone to consult you, you have the answer, you make someone feel, you know, valuable, everything. So you have all these things that are going on. But a, a very smart, expensive smartphone, when the battery is down, is a paperweight. Like it's exactly. a very expensive paperweight, right? So I take time. I became very intentional and very focused to take some time for myself. So it could be um, one hour every day where after, you know, I cook dinner, I'm just going to go in a place. And my husband knows that this is a no-go zone because I'm recharging my battery. If I don't feel myself up if I don't recharge my battery I can't be a good mom I can't be a good wife I can't be a right. good anything right so I take intent I, I became I become very intentional of taking those time um, I also uh, have um, journaling um, that helped me see a pattern so if I'm going into like a hamster <laughs> wheel um, and on my website, I have a free success journal specifically created by me design. This is what I would like in a success journal. So I created mine, um, but it's a mother oriented one. So define your intention of the day. What kind of mother do you want? Uh, coloring. Hey, color your mood. Are you feeling this glass half empty, half full? And then we examine what, what gives you joy and what drains you. And right. you, you have a morning routine of journaling and an evening routine but after like a week or two that you do that you start seeing a pattern for me it was you know doing email was draining me day in and day out talking to people was making me perking in so I start reorganizing my day to say in the morning I'm very productive so I'm going to do all the email in the morning but I'm when I start just, you know getting my battery mid-level I'm going to talk about, you know, be with those activities that give me a little bit more joy. So it's a very powerful thing. Um, I do dance a lot. <laughs> so nice. when you stress, you just put like a good song and then boom, 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 two minute dance. And that works for me. So move your body. Um, even if it's going for a walk, dancing, singing badly in the shower, whatever is your job, right. do it. <laughs> but release that tension. And, and take care of yourself. The, your mental health is super, super important. So whatever works for you, even if it's uh, hiding in your closet, <laughs> when <laughs> yes. play hide and seek and the kid will never find you, take that 15 minute, 20 minute, however long you, you can. Because sometimes we don't have the luxury of one hour, right? Sometimes we can take interval of 10 minutes and have that space where you can just think and be yourself. I agree. And lastly, what's your take on mom guilt? Ooh, <laughs> I wish someone had told me, you know, here's the manual of what's going to happen when you become a mom. Right. Um, so my kid, I, I like yours, re relatively young, um, but he, he, he came very early on for me. And for the longest time, I, I, I tried to fight it. And then I realized that it's there to stay. I, I have friends that have kids that are way older than me and they still have the mom guilt. So I realized that, you know what, we're fighting something that it's a losing battle. So I befriend, I befriend my mom's guilt. So okay. sometimes it's there and there's nothing you can do. You forgive yourself a lot. But I have created something mainly to make me feel good or what I call makeup, you know, system. So my mom guilt is usually when I'm not there for my kids because I have to go to work, because I have to do a presentation, because, you know, everything that takes me away from those joyful memories with my kid. Right. So I create a system where because I took one hour away, I'm going to give you one hour back <laughs> where it will be focused and dedicated to you. Um, so, you know, sometimes we just lie down on the floor and make snow angel for 30 minutes and there's enough and then you realize kid 
don't necessarily not need the quantity. They just like the quality. You know, right. my own kid like to come in the middle of a presentation and have a big, long 30 second hug and they're fine. So mom give, for me, my advice is to say, you know, it's there. Okay. Instead of fighting it, just say, okay, you're there to stay. Welcome, sit on my couch. Um, and let's see how we deal with this. Sometimes life happens and you have no choice, especially the single mom out there that are listening to us. It's tough, right? Right. So make up however you can with your child, because if you think of your own childhood toy, um, you know, my own mom sometimes remember things that she feels guilty about. And I'm like, what? I don't remember that. Right. <laughs> right? So we sometimes too hard on ourselves. Um, and our kids, as long as they feel safe and loved, that's all they, that matter. And on right. my website, you will see that I say, there's no way to be the perfect mom, but there's a million way to be a good one. So I like that. So where can the people find you as far as if they need you? Because I'm sure that there's plenty, 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 plenty of moms that are listening who need someone to help them, to guide them through their journey. Where can they find you? Um, we're going to also include this information in the show notes, but go ahead and let the people know where they can find you as far as if you have any social media presence or, you know, websites, all of those things. Oh my God. So it will be an honor to walk a, li a little part of your journey. So whoever listening and feel like you, you know, it's something I can help. Like I'm a professional cheerleader. So <laughs> if you need that little boost, don't hesitate. It will be an honor. So I already talked about my uh, website. So www.mylifecouch, C-O-U-C-H. I explain why I chose couch dot uh, com. So here, there, I, I, you know, there's a lot of beautiful pictures, uh, some of me. <laughs> and then I explain my philosophy. I explain my story, why I, you know, being a mom in a corporate world and how I got into burnout, trying to be perfect in every single role. And then I realized it's not working. So I talk about this, the methodology, and I have a blog where I share my thoughts it's usually very deep thought about motherhood and all those things that we do. So superpowers and all that. So that's my website. If you want more light reading, follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, so it's Gladys Simon, S-I-M-E-N. Um, so it's where I talk about my adventure being a working mom. Um, when traveling was a thing with the pandemic, I will, you know, <laughs> write about my traveling, not missing my kid. No, I'm kidding. I was missing them. But <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> welcoming some full night's sleep. Um, but I talk about my adventure as a working mom on LinkedIn a little bit more. I put some humor into it. Um, so mom humor on LinkedIn, if you want to follow me. Um, and then uh, I'm building my Instagram. Don't know the detail yet, but it's coming. Uh, I'm not that social media. So I'm learning like everybody else um, right. to do something and to get out of my comfort zone. And that's another thing. If you're stuck and you want to get out of your comfort zone, come on my couch. I can get creative in stretching people out of their comfort zone. <laughs> and we need a lot of us. Some, we just need a couple of stretches because sometimes you get stuck. And again, you're getting told no, no, no. You're not, you're yeah. not, you're not so many times that you don't know how to pick yourself back up and, and move and motivate yourself to where you need to be. So I'm so grateful that you are a mom coach and um, <laughs> bring people to your couch so that I they will can put that on together. my blog. Toys put it right on there. Look, I, have a blog. I use that type of stuff too. put it right on there. Um, we need more um, people that are supporting moms. It is a hard job. It is a thankless job and it's a 24 hour, seven days yes. a week job. There is no days off. There is no tag teaming where you can just yep. be all on total visitation. Like you are a mom or you're a dad who's listening to this. You know that it is every day, all day you know that it is something that you have to try to balance and you're balancing everything around your children and trying to do the best. Like you said, there's no perfect pairing, but you're trying to do the best job that you possibly can. And also trying to make sure you take care of yourself to the best of your ability. But if you're struggling, yeah, if you're struggling with that, if you're maybe putting your, you know, more energy to one area and not enough in another area, I would gladly um, bring you right to Ms. Gladys so she can get you. I know. 
Yeah. We're going to examine that and rebalance everything, guys. Yeah, you need a balance. And every day is hard. Like One week you may do better in one thing and, and you may have to recharge again the next week. But if you need to know the, the, the tools that you need to know so that you can balance. So I'm, I, I'm grateful. We will make sure we put all the information in the show notes. So if you were working out or if you were out and about and you were listening to this podcast episode, do not fret. It is in the show notes so that you can make sure you can get a hold of Gladys so you can get on her couch and get your mom coach so that you can balance yourself and get it all together. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining today. What conversation. I, I, want, I wanted to say something before we finish. Go ahead. Um, you, you have, you know, touch and inspire me in a way that is like so beautiful um, by your strength. So I encourage any mothers that are out there um, that struggling or that has, like I call toy survive <laughs> motherhood, <laughs> yeah. come to her show and share your story. Guys, we need to talk about it more. We need to normalize those conversations. And toy is wonderful in getting all those stories out of the, I think I, I said more on her show than I've ever said, even to my own self. So Come out and, and share your story. Let us hear each other's story. Let us celebrate each other's story. Right. Um, because each story to motherhood is different, but we have all those things in common. It's an uphill battle. Um, but we, we won't regret having kids. It's the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. But it has to be celebrated that, hey, we have gone from point A to a point B. So please share the story. And Toy. Thank you so much for sharing yours today. Oh, absolutely. And thank you for being on here. Like I said, I want everybody to know that you exist and that you're here <laughs> to be a, a tool, a, a help to someone who may be a, you know, alone or they're facing it. Even if they're with someone, they're just, they're feeling alone because again, our unique story being a mom is, is unique. And the, the things that yeah. we go through are truly unique to another mom. So mm -hmm. from one mom yeah. to another mom, thank you for even having oh. invaluable service. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So what did you think? Being a mom is not glitter and strawberries and all kinds of fun wrapped up into every little ball of whatever you're thinking. Being a mom is hard work. And being a mom is also one of those jobs that really is one of the thankless jobs that any woman will ever have. And I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I'm absolutely not, you know, it's a blessing to be a mom. There's so many women who would love to be a mom, who have tried to become a mom, who just were unsuccessful. There are women who do not even desire to be a mom. But one of the things is that I need to always just reiterate to everyone, the journey with motherhood has so many ups and downs with it. There are so many different parts and moving parts that come along with taking on the responsibility of raising children. And it's not just about having them, right? Anybody can have a child, but to raise them and to do the things that you can, to try to do what you need to do for yourself, to be honest with you, is one of the most major hurdles of becoming a mom. Moving in the way that you need to move to make sure that you're safe and secure, you make sure your child is safe and secure. So I don't take that journey lightly. I'm glad it's, we're so appreciative of your wisdom. And I'm hoping that anyone who is listening today who feels like they need to get that mom coach um, and go sit on Mrs. Gladys's couch, go ahead and do so. You want to make sure that you have everything that you need so that you can be the best mom that you can be. One of the things that I have learned in this short little journey of becoming a mom, I say short because my oldest is only 12 and I feel like that's just a drop in a bucket to even anything that I'm going to be dealing with as we begin to get to the meaty meat and potatoes of being a mom. Um, I will say that feeling like you're unsupported, feeling like you don't have enough people surrounding you to help you become better is one of the challenges that I know I faced. I've talked about this and many times on these episodes, it's just, you know, the struggle to do the right thing to, you know, what are you supposed to do? There's no handbook. How do I handle this? Um, feeling secluded. These are real life situations that happen to every last mother. Um, and so I want to say to all the moms, you guys are rocking it. I'm going to say that from one mom to another, because sometimes we don't hear enough, you know, um, about how much we're doing great and how much we're trying our very best and putting out our very best energy and our very best effort. So from one mom to another, I want to say, 
you're doing a great job. Um, it's Friday, so make sure, make sure, make sure you are doing everything you can to renew yourself. You don't have to be a mom, anybody that's listening to this podcast, make sure that you renew yourself. I find it very interesting that on the weekends, we don't give ourselves enough rest. We don't give ourselves enough time to calm down, cool down, to allow ourselves to give ourselves permission to literally have um, an enjoyable weekend. And sometimes an enjoyable weekend doesn't mean that you have to have plans for every single day. It can be as simple as just simply relaxing. Having no plans can sometimes be the best plan. So I just wanted to encourage everybody this weekend to really rejuvenate yourself. Find something that really feeds your soul, your spirit, and and gravitate towards that. Have fun, relax yourself, relax your soul, and just do everything that you can to just rock out and have an amazing weekend. And I will be back. We will be back. We have another amazing guest next week. I can't wait for you to hear her. She is dynamic. These guests have been really killing it in the game. So thank you to every guest that has come on Conversations with Toy. Have an amazing weekend yourself and make sure you get that good glass. For me, I'm going to have a good glass of wine because that's what I do. You have yourself a great weekend and we'll be back next week. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.